I came home, there was uh, graffiti on the garage. I was really shocked. I was in grade 10 and it was my birthday. The tradition was my friends wrapped up my locker. We get to my locker and someone had written Dyke in permanent black marker. When I was in high school, there was a mural. We got to put our names on it and paint our hands and put our hands on the wall. Somebody decided to write tranny fag beside my name. I walked out of my school into the parking lot. There was my car and in bright pink was the word fag written on my windshield. It's weird because the parking lot was filled with cars, but it felt like mine was the only one there. Yeah. It just made me feel like really anxious. I remember just feeling so empty when I looked at that wall. It felt like other people had more of a say about me than I did myself. I felt unnerved. I felt violated. It was my house. It's sad that people would take the time to write that. My heart sank. I had no idea who it was, so that's scary. Growing up, there was no gay straight alliances. There's, there was no LGBTQ anything in high school. You didn't want to be different growing up back then. My high school experience was pretty heterosexual for the most part. I very much felt as if I looked very masculine. The labels like tomboy and butch, it was confusing. Shame has played a large part in my life. I'm exhausted with carrying that around all the time. There's like a mold of masculinity that you're supposed to fit, and if you don't fit it, then you're different or you're less than. When I first started in high school, I came out as a lesbian, and I started getting a lot of homophobia from the students, from staff. For the first two years was not good. It was not pleasant. So in grade 11, 12, that's when I started more standing up for myself and speaking up. I've seen love overpowering hate in my life. When it comes to transphobia, it's about you. And you have to learn to build that thicker skin to be able to say like, it's about me, but I'm awesome. <laughs> for me, the moments are like saying to myself, you're not a bad person. You're not less than anyone else. Sometimes it's the decision between self-hate and self-love. Be like unapologetically yourself all the time. Love a thousand percent overcomes hate. One person did something to a garage and a hundred people had our backs. Complete strangers offered to paint our garage. The amount of love we received for this incident was astronomical, it was off the charts. If I could imagine myself there right now, that teenager girl who I was in grade 10, I haven't forgotten her and what she's gone through. And it gives me the drive and the motivation to help other LGBTQ people. My life changed after 30. Once you start being honest, your life improves exponentially. And you have to take what happens to you and somehow turn it into a positive. This mural that I'm working on, it's a piece that is supposed to reflect not where we were, but how far we've come. My inspiration for my art comes from my gratitude for just life. Being queer definitely influences my art. It's important for me to share my experiences and the best way I know how is through my art. As I grow, I definitely see the growth in the art. Oh wow, this is incredible. It's very mesmerizing. Yeah. And I feel like you can't like look at the same thing twice in the same way, you know? Yeah, it's a good view. I really wish you could have come to my garage and done this. <laughs> like... I think you're wonderful, so. <laughs> So I try to represent everyone's story, just flow and getting through as well through the color. A lot of the times, life is all just about the flow. So it was really important for me to turn that negative into a positive and show that love truly transforms.